I don't understand why I have five different weather apps and not one of them can tell me the same thing. It's 2020, well, that's probably why. What's going on everybody? Let's try this again. Uh, let's see what happened. Microphone was messed up. I rambled a whole lot the first time I tried to do this. Battery ran out, so we'll just speed through this real quick. Today, we're gonna go over wind jupos. Finally, I know. So I tried to explain on the auto stacker video about your align points and all that and why it matters and all that. So I got my good friend Darth here. So when you image a planet, especially like Jupiter, that has a whole lot of detail and it moves really fast. And if you if you're focused, you know you're gonna might, you might be focused on the S over here. Everything else will be you know smeared, blurry, curved back here, and all that. So what when Jupos is gonna do is it's gonna take all of this picture by picture by picture by picture by picture and give it all in focus. I know he's cool, isn't he? When you open up Winjupos, first thing you'll do is you'll click pro Program, Celestial Body, and then whatever planet you're gonna do. Once you do that, Recording, and then Image Measurement. Now I already have this open from the video I just did 30 minutes ago that I had to delete, so we'll go through this again. So in here, this is a little bit overwhelming at first, but once every once you get everything set up and streamline it, you'll be through Winjupos in five minutes. It's really not that big of a deal. So you'll do You'll open your image. This is my data that I captured on August 7th. But in here we have all the picture files after auto stacker. You can see we're in our 70% stacked folder. We have all of our RGB files have all been combined into an RGB image. So we'll open that up. Now most likely what's gonna happen the very first time you open up a new planet, whether you know whether it's Jupiter, Saturn, or whatever, for the first time, or when you open up a new planet after having done the previous one, you know, last week, yesterday, a month ago, whatever, your window might look something like this. So over here, where it says with additional graphic, if you click without, it gives you just a circle with a line through it, a grid, you know, it gives you all that. But for Jupiter and Saturn both, if you do with additional graphic. It will give you a circle for the planet with all these lines for the equatorial belts and everything else. And so what you want to do is you want to align the features of the planet with the corresponding lines on the outline. And you can do it manually by going up, down, left, right. And you can make it go faster by doing control up, down, left, right. And then to make it bigger or smaller, you do function page up or page down. If you need to rotate it, you use the N and the P keys. N spins it clockwise, P is counterclockwise. And again, control makes it go super fast. However, the secret is, is if you hit function F11, it will automatically align it for you. And it does a pretty good job 99% of the time. So if you increase your gamma, you can see that the planet is just inside the outline. So now you have your planet and the outline in sync. So what we'll do now is we will measure. So what that's gonna do is it knows the date and the time and the planet. And so it knows where it was in the sky. And so by hitting measure and then going back to image and then saving, which I've already done, it will take these files. So you can see 313, 315, 319, 321, and 324. So that's a span of 11 minutes. And so over that course of 11 minutes, you know, Jupiter or it moved X amount of distance. And so when Jupos will compensate for that rotation and give you a final image. And if you look over here on the right, you'll see a little bitty small circle that's a moon. And so you can see whenever we get into the other frames, that moon will come into view. Well, I guess it'll be this way. It'll come into view on that side of the screen. And that's it. And so from here, you just open the next file. And if you watch real closely, you'll see it move just a little bit. See, miscellaneous, measure distance, image, save open next file it mo rotates a little bit measure distance save we'll go ahead and skip to the final one so you can see the moon come into view ah see it right there so you get your three four five eight pictures all measured and saved and then from there you go to tools derotation of images so now so you go to edit add and you'll open up your dot ims image measurement setting you'll open those up and so you have this graph right here so this box right here shows you your quadratic image size which is 1500 by 1500 and then the size of the planet 
in relation to that. So if you wanted a bigger picture, you would, you know, go 2000. 1500 gives me a nice, nice background sky though. You can rename the file, which I've already done, so I'm not going to save it again. And then you hit compile image. It gives you a final image, which I will open up in Registax. So if you look now, here is our derotated Jupiter. I mean, it looks great compared to a single RGB file. You can see there's a little bit of noise in here. I mean, there's a lot of detail in this one file, but it's mostly concentrated in this area. Whereas if you look at the derotated version, you can see there's a whole lot more detail off in the, on the outer parts of the planet. So if you look at the box here, the outer part right here is what we have out of Winjupos. In this box is just with a little bit more wavelets applied. And also what I'm gonna do is I will RGB balance it because you can see the, the ZWO filters for some reason are really red heavy auto balance and then I will brighten up the histogram a little bit and I'm just kind of zooming through this because I've already done it like three times and then hit do all. So now you can see in just a few steps how we went from this to that. At this point you're done. You save, post to Instagram, whatever, but I'm not happy with it. The RGB balance works to balance all of the colors, but it doesn't balance them naturally. And I don't like that. I'll save it, which I've already done, and I'll open that in Photoshop. So here is our picture out of Registax. And then for the sake of speed and time, because I know you know people probably don't really care, I have the final version. Pretty much what I did is I just did color correction and then got rid of some of the artifacts out here on the limb. I darkened the edges, which you can see. That's pretty much it. The only other thing I wanted to show you in Photoshop, for some reason when you do RGB balance with a red heavy image, then it gives you a blue heavy image. So to combat that, duplicate the layer, go to image, auto color, and then change your blend mode to color. And you can see that helps you get your more natural Jupiter colors just from doing that. And that is Winjupos slash Photoshop. That is our final Jupiter image after capturing and stacking all that. I just realized the only thing I haven't done is do the actual RGB combine. So we can go ahead and do that now since we're already in Photoshop. So when you have a mono camera and you go through auto stacker, you'll have a red, green, and blue channel for all of your sequences. So to combine them, what you will do, so you have your red channel, your green channel, and your blue channel. You'll select all those and open them. So now from the blue channel, you do controller command A, controller command C, so that will select all and copy. Go to your red channel, go to channels, and then in the blue channel, you'll controller command V to paste. So now that blue picture is on the blue channel of the red image. And then we'll do the same thing to green. A, C, go over, V. And there's an RGB picture that you then take into Winjupos as a color picture. But anyway, you know, I was thinking my buddy Jeremiah Sorrells posted a picture of the Dumbbell Nebula the other day. And he was talking about Charles Messier discovering it and what he would think about, you know, Jeremiah sitting in his driveway taking that picture with technology today. And I mentioned to him something about, you know, how Galileo, what he would think about, you know, a picture like this that I just took 30 feet away in my backyard, you know, while sitting in shorts. And, you know, and he said something to me that really, it, it struck a chord and said, you know, that we're carrying on their work and their legacy. And I think that's, you know, you have to look at it, whether, you, you know, you've never taken an image before, you're one of the best in the world, or you're you know, in that 99% in between that even the image that you can take with your cell phone, you know, a focal through the eyepiece would just blow them away. And you are at that point carrying on their work and their legacy. And I think that's something you need to think about. I didn't think about it in that context until a week ago when he, when me and him talked about it. And it's a great experience. Uh, it's something you could pass on to other people. And yeah, I mean, you can get more equipment, better equipment, bigger telescopes, whatever. But even stuff that we're doing with six, eight inch telescopes, you know, for stuff that costs less than 1500 bucks, $2,000 is just mind blowing and amazing. And so think about that whenever you're disgruntled with your pictures and you, 
you know they can be better and all that. I mean, you're already you're already taking those steps to be better, and you're going to be better. It just takes practice and time. I mean, we've gone through all of the software and everything. There's a whole lot more videos in the works. I tried to shoot one with Mars last night, but the clouds didn't get the memo, so hopefully this weekend it'll clear up and we'll be able to do a video live from the telescope capturing Mars through fire capture and, you know, every step of that process. But anyway... I hope that y'all have enjoyed this Planetary 101 tutorial series. I greatly appreciate all of the support and the kind replies and comments that I've been getting. You know, if y'all want to see certain videos or whatever, let me know in the comments below. And other than that, I will see y'all later.